to see you. Welcome back, Rick. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'd like to start by just getting your view with rates having backed up and now these rate cut expectations having been pushed out. Yeah. So, I mean, firstly, it's a pretty, when you think about what 2024 has been, we came into this year, I think the markets were a bit overzealous, uh, to say the least, about the Fed. You know, the discussion was, can they go in March or are they going to go in March? I heard people say definitively they're going in March. You know, you had six or seven rate cuts priced in. Now we're down to less than two cuts priced in. I think the markets, markets tend to overshoot like they did at the beginning of the year. I think you could still overshoot a bit until you get inflation data that is, you know, gives you some sense for we're going to see core PCE, which is a Fed's metric, closer to a more stable 2.5% rate. So you can still overshoot a bit. Uh, I think managing your interest rate exposure makes some sense. But I think you're getting close to the level pricing in. You know, I still think the Fed would like to get one or two cuts done this year. But we need the data to help us. So I think in the interim, you got to let the market do what it's going to do. You got to be a bit conservative, your rate exposure. We could still back up a little bit more. Mm. But, uh, you know, I think you're finding levels, particularly in the front to the belly of the yield curve, that are, that are making some sense. Do, do you think there's real risk that they don't cut at all this year? Fed speaker after Fed speaker certainly sounds like patience is the, the word of the game. John Williams of the New York Fed again today, quote, I definitely don't feel urgency to cut interest rates. Do you think there's a chance they don't cut at all this year? Oh, I absolutely think there's a chance they don't. I mean, listen, the inflation data has been surprisingly durable. And, you know, particularly, I mean, it's not goods inflation. Goods inflation is running three months, six months moving average, negative 1.3 percent. Goods inflation, which, by the way, is the one that's influenced by the by interest rate much more profoundly. Service inflation is still well too high. By the way, it's very hard for the Fed to bring that down. You think about insurance, you think about health care, you think about educational costs. So will the Fed sit there for a bit longer, let it come down? I, I think that's definitely a possibility. Our gut, say we're more than our gut, our analytics and our data would suggest that you're going to start to get numbers, 0.2 type of month-on-month -month inflation readings that will give the Fed the window to do it. Hey, listen, I mean, I'll say something pretty provocative around this. that I'm not sure it's clear to me today in a new modern economy that's a service-oriented economy that the interest rate tool uh, doesn't does does really do much today. I mean, you, we've moved 500 base points on the upside. You still have an unemployment rate that's under four. And quite frankly, there are parts of the economy that operate really well that have higher level of income because where rates are because of where rates are. I think the Fed should get the rate down about 100 basis points. I think they'd like to get it there. But listen, can they wait before uh, they do it, given the data? Yeah, they can certainly be patient. Are you, are and you they making, will, and I think that's what you'll hear next week. Are you making the argument that, you know, whereas we once thought we, quote, unquote, needed rate cuts, that we don't necessarily need them in the way that the economy is responding now? So I think, you, I think, the, I think the Fed should cut rates. And the reason why I think they should cut rates is because what happens is much of the U.S. economy today is not interest rate sensitive. You think about who spends on R&D today. We have a digital economy, service economy. The R&D spend, it's not financed like it used to be. It's often financed through free cash flow. You have many people have already locked in their rates. Companies have already termed out their debt. It's not that interest rate sensitive. What is interest rate sensitive? Low income, small, small banks, small business, real estate. And so what's happening, you create a pernicious impact on parts of the economy, and it's not really influencing the other. And inarguably, for higher income, for a lot of the economy, when you keep rate this high, you're providing a lot of income. Deposits at our extraordinarily high levels. What's happening is you're getting a lot of income flow through the system that recycles into parts of the service economy. So, listen, I think if you got the rate down to still what is a restrictive level, then you have what is a more normalized economy or more normalized discount rate for this economy. Listen, I don't think they're going to do it, though, until you start to get those point twos. But I, I think unequivocally they should get there.